So back to mobile homes, um, the lease amount 500. When I first got in and we were doing rehabs, um, probably bought it for about 5,000, probably put another probably 10K in it, probably another 10K in it, and then ended up selling that one for probably about 50,000. 50, Hi, this is Kelly from Hills Deals and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course, available on Vimeo, and today we have Dr. Will Moreland in the house. How are you doing, Dr. Will? Kelly, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, super excited to be here with you and your community, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay. So, Dr. Will, you wear a lot of hats. You're a husband. You're a father. You're a veteran. You're a mobile home investor. You're a mentor. Uh, you're. Did I mention you're an author? You've written several Author. Books. Okay. Yeah. And actually, the people that you mentored, Later on, they wound up mentoring me in the mobile home business. You wear so many hats. Did I miss any of the hats, or that's pretty much uh, it? Those, those are enough for right now. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And so how we met, we've never really met in person, person but how, do, how we met is, I think you sent me a message on Facebook uh, Messenger. And it I goes down in the DM. It goes yeah. down in the DM. I'm not, I'm but on the business that. side, on the business yeah. side, right? Yeah. And I've been following you, and I said, there's no way that this guy is messaging me. I feel like I'm a peon in the mobile home business. But you messaged me. I think you said something real nice about what me and my brother were doing. And then I was like, I'm calling this guy because I don't believe it was you. And then when you answered, I was even shocked, you know, because we were middle in the middle of a rehab. And I'm like, man, you were just so personable. And I just, I mean, I really appreciate the love and support. And you've also purchased my course as well. And I, I mean... You have supported me. I mean, I, I really appreciate the love. I really but, do. You know, I, I saw you. We're in a mutual group, like you said, and I saw the work that you were putting in, and that's the type of energy that I just always want to be around. And uh, even as I told you back then, you know, I learn from everybody, right? I learn from everybody, and especially people that are just getting into the industry. They may be doing something today, present tense, that I don't know about. You may be using a system. You may be using an app. You may just have a unique way. And I saw the energy and I saw your results, right? That's the bottom line for me. When I see people getting results, I don't care what level you're at. I don't care how long you've been doing it. You've been getting results. I can learn something from you. And so uh, I reached out to you and uh, I, I did. I invested in your course. I got some benefit out of it. I'm inside your group. And so uh, it's, it's, a mutual, it's a mutual respect here. I respect you just as well. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate that. So introduce yourself, uh, Dr. Will, for people who might not know who you are, which I find that very hard to believe, but introduce yourself, would you please? Yeah, so I'm going to try to make a very long story short. So I'm originally from Compton, California. So if you're, if you're familiar with Compton, California, uh, back when I was growing up, Compton was said to be the worst city in America, raised by a single mother. So if you can kind of see what that looks like you can almost imagine where I ended up how I ended up in life and, and true to form um, when I was 18 years old I got arrested and I was in the court and the judge told me he says listen you're 18 if I sentence you right now the rest of your life will probably be jacked up and you'll probably be in the system for the rest of your life I'm gonna let you leave my court and in two weeks, I want you to come back and tell me what you're going to do with your life. Why shouldn't I put you in one of our nice facilities? So I left that courtroom and um, in about a week and a half, time for me to come back. I still didn't know what I was going to do. A gentleman by the name of Corey Oliver came up to me walking in the mall and said, hey, man, have you ever thought about joining the Army? Now, I had never thought about joining the Army up until that time. But I said in that moment, I said, man. The judge will probably go for this. He'll probably go for this if if uh, I tell him I'm going to go to the army. He probably won't send me to jail. And sure enough, I told my recruiter. I said, "Hey, here's the situation I'm in. I need to go to court in like three days." He said, "I'll go to court with you. Speak on your behalf." And the judge, I got in front of him. The judge was like, "That is a wise decision, Mr. Moreland, that you're doing. I wish you well." 
and he's what I call Kelly my first disruptor he's my first disruptor um, a lot of times in life we have some negative thinking we have some negative habits and we need to be disrupted our, our thoughts need to be disrupted and so he was the first individual that disrupted my pattern so I joined the military um, I get stationed in Germany so if you can if you can imagine growing up in this type of environment in Compton and not just going to another city or another state, they sent me to a whole different country. So you could probably imagine what it was like for a 19 year old. It was super, you know, culture shock, right? Not just to be uh, in a different country, but to be uh, around different people, even inside the military that were coming from all around the United States. I had never, when I grew up, I didn't go, I didn't travel more than 20 miles away from Compton. My, my first 18 years of living, I didn't travel more than 18 miles. And so I was very sheltered. But then um, my second lesson came where I realized, Kelly, that you could be in a new place but have an old mindset. Right. Like those that are listening to you right now, listening to us right now, they probably joined your group and they probably invested in your course to take them to a new level. But if they're thinking in their old way, they won't be able to take advantage of it. So here I was 8,000 miles away from Compton, California with the opportunity to transform my life, but my mind was still in Compton. And so my behavior and my actions reflected like I was still on the block. So here I am in the army, I got the uniform on, but in my mind, I'm still a gangbanger. In my mind, I'm still a drug dealer. In my mind, I'll give you this work. And so I was getting ready, literally getting ready to get kicked out of the army. And my second disruptor, his name was Sergeant Major Babs. He says, listen, he was, he was uh, the battalion Sergeant Major. He says, listen, man, you're getting ready to mess up your life, man. If I throw you out, you're getting ready to mess up your life. He says, this is what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna allow you to come work for me. I'm gonna mentor you. And long story short, um, he began to ask me questions. And one of the initial questions he asked me was, where do you see yourself in five years? And I want everybody that's listening to us, I want you to think about that as well. Where do you see yourself in five years? More specifically, financially, more specifically, in this mobile home industry business opportunity, where do you see yourself in five years? I told him, I said, Sergeant Major, my whole life they told me I'd be dead by, I was, by the time I was 18. My whole life they told me if I wasn't dead, I'll be in jail for the rest of my life. So I, I never thought about it. Well, he said, I want you to go home this weekend and I want you to think about it. I came back, I said, Sergeant Major, I know I want to be a great soldier and I know I want to get my education. He said, I can help you with both of those things. He began to give me a blueprint of success, I started following it. I fell in love with uh, this thing that we call personal development, um, motivation and all that type of stuff. And um, I started reading books. I had never read books before, but I started reading all of these books and we can probably talk about that later. But um, that's when it kind of took off for me. The, the light bulb took off that, oh man, my past is not a prison. My past is just gonna be a platform for my future. And so I wasn't going to allow my past to put me in a prison. I was going to learn from it and let it plateau me to what I'm doing today. And so I fell in love with personal development. I fell in love with leadership development. I ended up getting out of the military, um, started a consultant company, a company I've, I've had now for over 20 years. And, um, and uh, I've been able now to travel literally all around the world. I've lived in five different uh, countries. Um, I currently live in Phoenix, Arizona. We have a home in St. Martin as well. And so to kind of summarize it, that's where we are today. And we can talk a little bit more specifically about the mobile home piece. I got into that a little bit later. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, I see your Facebook page and I tell you what, some of these vacations I can't afford to go on. So I just, <laughs> I just live through you. You know, you're, you're on your private jet and then your Facebook page I mean, you have like a serious uh, uh, stream of books on there, and I, I did manage to order one of the books, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later, too, but you're doing things 
I mean, some big things, some amazing things. And that was a very amazing story. And I thank you again for your service. You know as well I'm retired military as well. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So, tell, so th thank you. So tell me, how did you start in the mobile home business? So originally, um, I started. I started out in residential properties. I started off in residential properties, and uh, once again, a disruptor came to me. A gentleman by uh, the name. Uh, uh, his name was Darren Skinner, and he came to me when I was a, a young guy, um, about 22, 23 years old, and he says, "You should buy a house every year. Every year that you're in the military." You should figure out a way to buy a house. And I thought it was crazy. What are you talking about, man? I'm from California. Houses cost $500,000, $600,000. How can I buy a house every year? How can I buy a house every year? He says, it's possible you can do it. Now, remember, the first 18 years of my life, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't go more than 20 miles outside of Compton. So I didn't know about South Carolina. I didn't know about Texas. I didn't know about Alabama, any of this type of stuff like property uh, cost was different in these different areas. I didn't know anything about that. But the more he started saying it, I said, man, if he says I should do it, it must be possible. So I started researching real estate and then I had another buddy come up to me and he says, man, I, I need to go back. We were in Germany. He's like, I need to go back to Texas and check on my house. And this guy, he was like 24 and I'm like, you got a house? He was like, yeah, man, I got a house. I own a house in, in Texas. I'm like, you're 24 though. You got everybody else was trying to get Jordans and play Madden, right. and this dude was talking about he got a house. I'm like, you got a house? So then he said, Yeah. I was like, Well, how much did you pay for it? So he was like, Oh man, I paid sixty thousand. So when he told me that, I was like, Oh, you must got a shack because in California, you know what I mean? You ain't getting okay. nothing. Right? Sixty thousand right? I'm like, You must you must live in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he shows me this picture. And that was the first double Y I had ever seen, manufactured home. Okay. And I was like, because coming from California, when you say trailer, I'm thinking trailer. Like, like you know what I mean? Hill Billy, Hill Billy on wheels, you know what I mean? Trailer right. park trash. That's, what I'm, that's the only image of trailer I had. So right. when he's like, yeah, man, I got me a double Y, man, double Y trailer. I'm like, this dude excited about a double Y trailer, man. This dude country, you know. And so... <laughs> He shows me the pictures. When he shows me the pictures, I'm like, oh, that's a house. He's like, yeah, what did you think? I'm like, man, you don't want to know what I thought. So anyway, um, he shows me this manufactured house, and when he told me it was 60 Gs, and he, he told me he got it with his VA loan, and he didn't have to put nothing down or anything like that, I was like, bet, I want one. So I bought my very first house uh, when I was like uh, 20, 24, 25 years old. bought my very first house down in Colleen, Texas. Um, I had a plan. I said, okay, I realized that um, real estate was a way that you could leverage and you could accelerate your wealth, right? That was the best way you could accelerate your wealth. So I came up with a plan, and this was my plan. I was going to buy 10 houses. I was going to buy 10 houses anywhere between sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000, and I was going to hold them for five, six, seven years and let them mature to 100K, each of them mature to 100K. Once the 10 houses mature to 100K, I would be a millionaire. I would have a net worth of a million dollars. And that was my plan. I executed on that plan. I got my 10 houses. I got my net worth of a million dollars. Once you got your net worth of a million dollars, you can pretty much go into any bank and will and deal and do whatever you want. So I did that for about 10, 15 years. Um, got up, I don't even know how many, between Probably, probably anywhere between 80 and 100 houses over the last 20 years that we've had. But then I found out about mobile homes. Another guy that I was in the military with, he reached out to me and he says, man, this mobile home game is legit. And so once again, always looking at leverage, I looked at it and I was saying, oh, wait a minute, because the margins the margins for the mobile homes were so outstanding. I didn't believe him. He was like, oh man, I just put 4K in this house right here. I didn't even put no work in it. I just turned around and sold it for 12,000, for 15,000. I was like, 
So you put four in, you didn't have to do no work, no rehab, none of you, you're not flipping them. It's like, no, nah, man, I'm just buying them, selling them. I was like, oh, so by this time, um, I'm running my company. I really don't have the time to go out and look for homes and flips. So he was one of my first partners in the mobile home game where I would tell him, hey, man, if you find a mobile home that you want to get, I'll go in half with you. I'll go in half with you. So initially, uh, we would go in half. We were doing rehabs. Um, and so uh, we started doing the rehabs, but I really didn't like the rehab. Cause I just didn't have the time for it. I just didn't have the time for it. And so um, I talked to another guy, and he was like, man, I'm just buying them and selling them. And for me and for all of you listening to us, you just got to find the model that works for you. For me, the model that works for me is I try to do everything else I do just so I can earn money, just so I'll have money to be a lender and partner with uh, mobile home uh, investors, right? So that's the model I use. I, I go and I partner with um, other mobile home um, investors, and uh, we just we just sell them off. And uh, I have very few that I hold on to. We we we've, we've become um, um, uh, the bank for a couple of them, but. More than likely, the thing that really gets me is to be able to buy them real quick and turn around and sell them. So that's short, kind of how um, we got into it. And then I, I know you had some other questions that get us really into yeah. it. I, I, I want to hit on that millionaire thing. I already yeah. knew you were a millionaire, but I didn't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> uh, but you are actually the second million, millionaire that I've interviewed uh, this week. But I already, oh, I already knew you were a millionaire. And I tell people all the time, if I would have found out about mobile homes, like before I even went to college, I would be a millionaire as well. Because, I mean, the, the return on the investment is just uh, through the roof. It really is. So, Dr. Will, tell me, about how many mobile homes do you own to date? So, we're currently holding, uh, holding about eight of them that we're renting out. And like I said earlier, for me, the motto is, um, I don't like to really hold on to them, but these situations, it just required that um, the homes that we got, they were in pretty good condition where we could just re-rent them out. So we became the, uh, the bank for um, some families and um, uh, they gave us a down payment and uh, now they just give us, you know, monthly payments and then uh, we have maybe um, no more than like a five-year mortgage on them and then they're going to buy them out from us. Okay. And so you're you're just purely all about the cash flow, and you, you're all, yeah. I'm, so the, here's a word that changed my life. The word is net worth, right? Net worth. So I'm all about building net worth. So not so much cash on hand, but net worth, and then having assets that obviously later on down the line I'll be able to cash in and and get the money off of them. But for me. Uh, this time frame in my life, what works for me. And that's why I'm saying everybody listening, you're always going to get so much information. Like you're going to get information on notes and, and secondary liens and, and tax liens and all this type of stuff. You just got to find what you're comfortable with, what you're willing to get up in the morning to do, what you're willing to stay up late at night and do. For some people, I, I, I have some friends that they really enjoy the whole rehab process and going through that, um, I'm not a I'm not a handyman type of guy, so my mind doesn't work like that, right? I I can't put no cabinets up there, I'll be crooked, all that type of stuff. <laughs> I'm just seeing you out there, Kelly, you and your brother, and uh, I'm like, man, I wish I could, but I, I just can't. So for me and my model, I would have to pay somebody else to do it, and so it cuts into my profit, and um and and, and so it just didn't work. For me, but I have, you know, you do it, and I mean, you have your brother, y'all do a bad, like, I see some of the rehabs you guys do, like, from a pride and an ego point, I would love to, like, show the before, I never have any before and after, because I don't do it, but I would love to have some before and after, because I know it's so much pride in it, but it's just not, it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah, I work alongside my brother, Joe Harden, I'm telling you, he's a perfectionist, sometimes I'm like, okay, let's go home already, it's already, right. okay, let's move on. But he is really a perfectionist, and he he really motivates me a lot. So, so you never took no type of course or anything, just like word of mouth. Type just of word of mouth. So, like I say, I was introduced to I was introduced to the opportunity from uh, one of my military buddies, Jamal, and um, he was like, "Doc, I'm telling you, I I didn't even like I'll be totally transparent with you, Kelly. 
I still don't I still don't understand how it worked in terms of um in, in terms of um closing the deal in, in this in this regard like what we do other people can go and do it like right. they literally don't need us to do it so I don't understand why they don't do it but they don't and I'm happy I'm not going to mess it up but for whatever reason they don't do it right right and so um the, the process of it, it works out like we go buy the property for $5,000. Guy comes up, says, I'm looking for a mobile home. Hey, man, we got one for twenty dollars Yeah, I'll take it. Can I can I give you? I got 5000 cash. Can I give you 5000 cash? So immediately, we've already cashed back out. We could, we could uh, put this guy, like the seven that I do have, um, we can rent it out to them. Or sometimes they have all the cash out, and we'll just turn around and sell it to them. And so, theoretically, they don't need. He could have that same guy could have went and knocked on the door and bought it themselves. Whether it's fear, whether it's whatever, just I don't know. I just know it works. I don't know how long it's going to work. So I'm trying to suck it up dry for <laughs> as you know as long as I can do it. But for me, man, that bang to buck, you know, I put in two, three, four, five thousand, and I can get back ten, fifteen, twenty thousand. Like doing minimum work. All I got is now, at the point I am now, I just come up with the money. I come up with the money, and the deals are there. And, you know, I try to get other people into it, and they're like, if it's that easy, why isn't everybody doing it? Because it's that easy. And most people like to complicate things. It, exactly, exactly. So let's get back to you talking about creating notes. So you create your own notes. You don't use a loan originator or anything like that, or you don't put your properties in a trust or anything like that. No, create the own, create my own notes. And once again, I want you guys, every time you listen to somebody, I want you to do what's comfortable for you. I'm only giving you one perspective, right? I'm only giving you one perspective. Take some of it that works for you. The other, throw it out. And so for me, um, I like to think, I like to keep everything, I like to keep everything simple. Um, a lot of people I talk to, um, they wouldn't have the risk tolerance or the um, um, to do it. They like, man, I need contracts. I need do 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 all this type of stuff. I have a simple form contract. Hey, man, here's the property. This is what I'm selling it to you for. And I'm I'm I don't know what they call it, but I kind of go off of you know my gut feeling. You know what I mean? If, right. if I think you slime me, Kelly, I'm not gonna do work with you. You know what I mean? Like I that's kind of how I go. Um, thankfully. Over the last 15 years, you know, I've never been burned on a deal or anything like that. Okay. And so to me, if I, in some sense, let me be totally transparent. In some situations, because I may have some other partners and they may feel more comfortable with certain types of contracts, we'll do a contract. But for me personally, uh, most of my deals, um, I'm just going off my, you know, intuition and, and things like that and uh, doing my own betting process. And when I talk to people, if I feel uh, warm and fuzzy about them, I'll sign the deal. Okay. So most of your properties are in the LLC. They're not in the personal property trust. No, they're, they're all in my Moreland uh, Legacy Investments. Okay. And so what is your criteria when it comes to buying a mobile home? Are you like uh, three bedroom, two bath, or two bedroom, two bath? Does so I everybody does like the, Everybody two, does the, Yeah. So me, I, I like the bread and butter, three bedroom, two bath. I'll go two, two. For me, it's the condition. It's the condition of the house, right? Uh -huh. And so, um, a lot of what we get, and a lot of uh, what is coming to our hand, is let's say a person has deceased. Their kids live in another state, um, or they may be deceased, and they didn't uh, have any family. A mobile home park owner may call me or my partner and say, "Hey, I got this mobile home. It's it's available. I need to I need to get it off my lot, or I need to get another renter in here, or something." Um, and once we look at the deal, if I once again, if I think I can get in four or five thousand dollars and resell it, and the majority of the people that we resell to, they're into doing their own D DIY, doing their own work and things like that. They get in there, do their own, and so if it's serviceable enough where they can just get in there and kind of live in there and and do some fix up while they're living in there. So if it's totally trash, I don't mess with it. But if I think I can sell it within thirty days, I get it. And so are all your properties in the same state or 
If you find out so, about a good deal in another state, you got boots on the ground, you're going to go with it. So for me and my model, I, okay. I have properties. The, the seven that we have are all in Alabama. Okay. But the deals that I do are Arizona, where I live, Tennessee, South Carolina, um, Texas, uh, everywhere. Because I'm only coming in as an investor. So, for instance, if I saw you and you said, hey, I, hey, I got a property down here in, you know, uh, Concord. If I got property down here in Texas, anybody want to go in with me? Those are the deals that are appealing to me. And so me and you would talk and I say, Kelly, okay, what's your idea with this property? What's your idea? And if you're saying, hey, I'm going to rehab it, I'm going to fix it up, then I'll probably walk away from that like, Kelly, that's not, that's not what, you know, I want to get into. Or if you say, Dr. Will, I just need the money to secure the property. I'll find some other lenders to do the rehab project, and we'll come up with a percentage that you're going to earn on your money. Then I'll do something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, I just want to be in, involved, as, as, as easy as, here's my money, and if you're not just going to sit, like if it's just me and you, Kelly, and okay. you put in two Gs, I put in two Gs, that's four, four Gs, and we sell, sell it for 20 Right, that's what sixteen thousand. So we're gonna split eight thousand. Right, right. Okay, I got you. That's the easiest way to do it. So, tell, so tell me this: How much have you? What's the least amount you spent on a mobile home, and the most amount you spent on a mobile home, including the rehab? So the least amount is free, yeah. okay. right? But then above free, I think the least amount was. Maybe like five hundred dollars. Okay. okay. And just catching, you know, you know the deal. You can catch people in a way. You know, you you catch people in certain situations, right. and um, and, and people as as crazy as it sounds, like five hundred dollars. Like you catch people in certain situations, and you'll be surprised. I've done this with, like, I, I'll, I'll tell you two, two two of them. So um, <laughs> this was uh one of my uh um residential properties that I acquired. A gentleman got a divorce, and the courts told him that he had to sell the house. He had to sell the house and split the profits with his wife. They owned the house outright, but because he was bitter with his wife, he sold me. He sold me. He sold me the house for five thousand dollars. The house had a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars worth of equity in it. Wow. Yeah. So he sold me the house. So back to mobile homes. Um, the lease amount five hundred. When I first got in, and we were doing rehabs, um, probably bought it for about five thousand. Probably put another, probably ten k in it. Probably another ten k in it, and then ended up selling that one for probably about fifty fifty thousand. Wow. Yeah. So, like, like I try to tell people, the returns on the investment are like through the roof. So I don't even know why somebody would hesitate getting in this business. So especially if you're talking about free mobile homes, you know, and it's there, and it's, and you know this by now. Um, how involved do you want to? How involved do you want to be in it? Like if it's going to be your, so I have four different companies. So um, the way I explain it to people is when I realize, okay, this is my earning potential with what I do. So let's just take. Um, motivational speaking. So I'm a speaker. Um, I earn anywhere between ten thousand and twenty thousand to do a speech. So that's not LeBron James money, right? Right. But I, I want to. I want to live like LeBron James. So I realized, oh, okay. I need to leverage the money I'm able to get. So if you're listening to me, you're a police officer, you're a teacher, you're military, you have a, what we would call a general, a general nine to five. But you got BMW, Aston Martin aspirations. You all right? You want to go? Uh, you need to now learn how to take the money you're earning. Like LeBron James, he earns more off of his endorsements than he does right from his from playing basketball. But you and I have to have that same mentality. So we're gonna max out whatever your job is. Max out, right? You can be a manager. You can be shift leader. Whatever it is. Max it out. Get the most you can get from that opportunity. 
but don't live up to that. I don't say, okay, boom, I, I earned 70K and I'm about to max it out. I'm about to go get the Mercedes. I'm about to go get the house. I'm about to go get the condo. Say, you know what? I'm going to live off 45. I'm going to take this other 20, this other 25, and I'm going to get into this mobile home thing. I can flip this 25 into 100K real easy. So now I'm earning 170000 right. off of my main job plus my investments. Right. And so if you use a model like me, man, I got this discretionary, you know, you may say, Dr. Well, I don't even have no money. Okay, boom. Next February, February's coming up. You are about to get a tax return. Take that 3K. Take this time between today and the next time you get a tax return, double down on what Kelly is teaching you guys and say, okay, this six months, Kelly, is my learning time. I'm about to learn everything I can from you. So when I do get this bulk money, boom. That energy is there for me to go do my thing. My energy is there for me. I, I'm feeling a lot more confident because I've learned the game. It's not like I'm rolling dice. And so I've taken Kelly course. I got everything I need to get out of it. And now when February hit around, I'm ready to go get my mobile home. You know, you may come across some money. You may, man, hey, Kelly, I got a thou. What, what can I do? with? Can I partner with you? Can I come in as a third partner? And I mean, you double that thousand to... 2000 now you got 2000 Kelly can we do it again boom now 2000 is the 4000 Kelly can we do it one more time 4000 is 8000 now 8000 is 16000 I mean that you just got to get in you, you you know what they say about the lottery you can't win if you're not in that's true that's true you know but, but honestly speaking Dr. Will when you're wholesaling you don't even need any money all you need is some yep. gas money uh, all you're doing is connecting a, a buyer and a seller and that's it so you don't need any money so and, and this is what I love about any type of real estate, any type of real estate, the opportunities, exactly what you just said, right? Yeah. So I just, I just want to give guys examples. So there was a property that I wanted. It wasn't a mobile home, but it was a property that I wanted to buy. I looked at the property, and um, it was in um, Killeen, Texas. It was on about five acres of land. So he, he had the house on this property. He had five acres of land. His land, he had his house, but his land was all trees, right? He had five acres. It was all wooded area. Down the street from down the street from his house was the sawmill. I went down to the sawmill, got the guy to come down with me. I said, hey, man, if I let you excavate this land here, how much would you give me? How much would you give me? They did the estimate. Let's just, you know, just, just, just say 20K. He said he's going to give me 20K. So now I use that money for my down payment. So I went back to the owner of the house. I said, hey, man, if you quick deed the house to me, I can sell these trees back here, this lumber back here, and I can get you your 20K down payment. He's like, man, I wish I would have thought about that. But he did. He did the deal, right? Boom. I got it. It didn't cost anything for me. And so there's so many create. This is why I love real estate. There's so many like you're into rehabs, but a, you know, five gallons of paint could equal five thousand dollars. Right. You just put some new paint in there, paint a fence. And that house went from being worth, you know, ten thousand to being worth fifteen thousand. Just because you spent a couple of hundred dollars on some, you can't get no investments better than that. Like, you can't make a stock go up. There's nothing you can do to a stock to go up. If the stock is $50, it's $50. Right. But if the house, if they say the house is worth $50, but I say, okay, I'm going to put some plants out front. Oh, okay, you just raised the value. Now it's, now it's worth $70. Okay, I put the plants out here. Uh, I'm paint this fence. You go paint the fence. Oh, that just took the value up. See, it's not a fixed asset like a stock. I can do something with my property. I can cut the grass. I can paint it. I can put a privacy fence up, and now my value goes up. I can put a privacy fence up for a thousand, but now in my marketing has privacy, privacy fence. That makes the house worth five thousand dollars more. True, true, and, and so that's why I love it. That's why I love it. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you the truth, Dr. Will. We actually uh, repainted the kitchen, and we did that that peel and stick backsplash. I'm like, yeah. God, the women were running through there. One lady was running. I'm like, where are you going? Come on back. I mean, stay focused. 
she was running up and down the hallway. Oh my God, I love it. I gotta have it. I'm like, okay, just for some peel and stick backsplash, you know, it's just amazing. And they love it. It's they the love little, it. It's, it's the little bitty things. It's the little it's, bitty you, things. You go down to Home Depot, you go get them chrome little knobs for the for the sink. People didn't think they didn't walk into the Taj Mahal. They like, oh. <laughs> just that, just that easy. And so this is why I love real estate, guy. And mobile homes, this is why I started focusing more on mobile homes than residential, because it's even so much, it's so much easier. Right, right. And so when you invest with other people, uh, I guess these are people that you trust and you've known for a while, correct? Yeah, so I'm in these groups. Like, once again, I reached out to you because I saw the energy that you were bringing. I saw that you was really connected, you know. Um, I do my due diligence. I don't want nobody to think I'm just out here throwing people money. So don't don't inbox me and say, hey, Dr. Will, I got a deal. I'm not, you know, I'm not a PPP loan. I'm not a PPP loan. So I'm not doing that. But, yeah, so over the years, I've built out some relationships. I work right now with about six, six different uh, individuals. And so uh, at least, you know, once a week, twice a week, we're in contact. I'm, I'm finding out what they have on the books, what they what they have cooking. But um, uh, in expanding what I'm trying to do, um, I'm looking to, i give you an example. Um, I have a, um, I have a, uh, uh, um, a, a speaker's academy that I'm running. And um, one of the things that I want to do is even move this over and start teaching them how to do this mobile. So when you're getting your fee for speaking, I want you every time, every time you get paid for speaking, I want you to set some money aside to get into mobile home investing. And so even inside that academy, I'm going to be creating partnerships inside that academy because they know each other, they've been working with each other, but I want them to be able to leverage their money as well. And so, Dr. Will, when you're investing with other investors, do you how do you go about checking to see if there's any back lot rent, taxes, any liens on the home? Is there a procedure about how you go about doing that? So there is, and I don't I don't uh, physically do it, but we have a checklist. We have a checklist that um, all of us use, and um, and we do our due diligence. We do our due diligence, and uh, and like I say, the six individuals that I work with. They're really uh, uh, super on that that type of stuff. Um, I used to do it um, when I first got into it, so my information may be a little bit lag, but I would always do uh, the title search and all that type of stuff to make sure that, um, there wasn't no second liens against the property and all that type of stuff. So your success is going to be in your preparation. This is not something that you want to get into willy-nilly Yes, we're saying it's profitable. Yes, we're saying it's easy, but we're not saying it's easy as as in meaning there's no work for you to do. So always in whatever you do, do your due diligence. Your prosperity is in your preparation. Right, because an investor actually contacted me uh, and she didn't realize the lady that was selling the mobile home to her was not on the title and the lady no. ran off with her money. I'll see. Yeah, and you're, you're going to have, you know, um, we all have our L's that we've taken, right? We all have our L's, and um, that I, I call that educational cost. You just yeah. pay for a great education. You, you ain't kidding, and I believe she had did that like four times to some other people, so she was really running a scam on people. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, if uh, if somebody hits you in your DM, I wouldn't suggest that you just you know send them money the next hour, right? Do your deep, you know, uh, ask around, search around. Like, I, you know, before I reached even out to Kelly, um, I researched all her stuff. I looked on her page. Is this her eighth Facebook page? Is this, you know what I mean? Is right. she showing up? Is she really a person? that it look like she has some human interaction with other people? Um, you do a great job because you do videos. So um, I see that you're, you're coming on live all the time. You're doing, you're doing stuff like this. So for me, those types of things make it a little bit easier to say she's probably not going to blow up her, her spot for $2,000. No, that's not Probably gonna not going to be worth it for her. To, no, it's not. It would, you know what I mean? Right, right. So, you know, since the pandemic, I'm sure people have learned to start living within their means. And now we've got another strand of something coming along. Where do you see the future of, of mobile home investing with this another this other strand of uh, of the COVID possibly coming? So two things. 
couple of things. Us that are in this industry um, and what you're doing, right, um, what I'm doing, educating people on what a mobile home really is. Like I said, when I started out, I had the wrong idea of what a mobile home was. I think a mobile home is a great opportunity for a new couple just starting out. I think a mobile home is a great opportunity for a recent college graduate or someone just now entering into the workforce. I think our mindset, once again, of what we think a mobile home is. And so for what keeps most people from traditional homes is what? That big down payment, that 20,000, that 30,000, that 40,000. Oh, we're never going to we're never going to have our dream of owning a home. And so it's really about re-educating the marketplace about what a mobile home is. The second thing is for us as investors and, and flippers to understand is people are always going to need somewhere to live. People are always going to need somewhere to live. So this is never never going away. Never housing is never going away. Um, in pandemic, guess what? Um, we did very well because in eight years, 10, 11 years ago, 2008, when uh, everybody was losing their house, guess what they became? Renters. Mm -hmm. Right? So you people are always. You mean renting out rooms in, the, in their homes? Or no, rent, renting, renting, no, renting, going from owning a home to now needing to rent a home. Oh, I got Because it. they lost their home. Right. So people are always going to need somewhere. So anytime you see people losing their jobs or whatever, they're probably going to end up being renters, right? Or they're probably going to need a different option. That's what we provide. We just provide a different option. So moving forward, um, I, I still see great upward um, mobility um, uh, in the mobile home industry. I'm, you know, I'm working now trying to double down, um, putting a system together so I can bring on more people to have more opportunities because like literally for me whatever I'm doing over here all I'm trying to do is collect all this all this dinero but then I'm trying to diversify it over here in mobile home investing and so if I can find another four to five solid other investors I'm just trying to spread them so I can leverage my money even more and so um, whether you're uh, buying and holding and renting out whether you're um, uh, Flipping, um, or whether you're just investing to sell, I mean, the money's going to be there. The money's going to be there. And when I look at both um, the pandemic and the recession, uh, mobile home investing and mobile home rentals, they weren't impacted as much as commercial. Mobile homes are pretty much uh, stable and, and standard. Like the mobile home parks that I deal with, um, they didn't have to lower their rents or anything like that. They stayed pretty steady. Right, right. And so where do you, you know, in my course, I have a lot of people who purchase my course, and they have, like you said, analysis paralysis. Keep yeah. reading, keep reading. And then I, I looked there in somebody else's course or doing something else. And do you have any, like, words of encouragement for somebody? Yeah, Let's so. Get into this business. Yeah, so if you, if you chase two things I have for you. If you chase two rabbits, you'll lose both of them, right? So if you're going to be heels and wheels and deals, then you got to double down, right? You got to double down and say, this is the community. This is the community that I can grow with. Trust Kelly, right? Trust her. She's bringing people. You see her connection. She's bringing uh, a wheel on here. She's bringing other individuals on here. So even if Kelly doesn't have it in terms of her skill set or her knowledge base, she's reaching out to her friends and her mentors to come and get it to you guys. So you got to double down and say, this is the community where I'm going to learn from. This is the community I'm going to double down. And like I said earlier, reach out to Kelly. Say, Kelly, you know what? I want to get in. I got $500. I got $1,000. I got $1,500. What's my next best move? Should I just hold on to this, save a little bit more? But trust you know philadelphia if you're a basketball fan they say trust the process right trust the process guys um someone's going to become a millionaire off of mobile homes why not you exactly, exactly. someone's going to change their financial situation via mobile home investing why not you someone's going to be the biggest mobile home investor in your area why not you? Like, that's one of my goals to secretly, when y'all, 
this dude owned half the mobile homes in Arizona. That's my goal. And so, um, get plugged in, guys. Get plugged in. Like, literally, seriously, get plugged in. The Bible says it like this, not to be spiritual, but the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You're never going to see the benefit until you commit. You will never see the harvest until you plant the seed. You'll never see the harvest until you plant. You got to do your part first. And I know it's going to be hard because as you're saying, I'm building my mobile home business. All everybody else sees is dirt. I thought you said you were building a mobile home business and you watering. And, but they see you watering dirt. They don't know what seeds you put in there. They, they don't know what your harvest is going to look like. This girl, she said she mobile home invest and all I see is dirt over there. Right? <laughs> That's what your garden looks like at first. It just looks like dirt. The only other people that understand that that dirt has the potential are people who are doing the same thing as you. Right, right. Right? That's, that's, if you go talk to another farmer and you say, man, I, I just put me some turnips in there, he expects it to be dirt. If you say, I just put the seeds down, he's not expecting for there to be anything except dirt. But if you talk to a non-farmer, what do they say? I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. <laughs> I don't see nothing. Because they're not a farmer. They're yeah. not a farmer. So I don't get I don't get advice from non, you know, investors or anything like that. Because their sense of, you know, knowing is gonna be warped. It's gonna be warped. Because right. all they see is dirt. It's other people. So like I say, doubling down with Kelly and other people in the group. You see the results. Like you're listening to us for some reason right now. Kelly has proven to a point that she's getting results. That's not fake Monopoly money she's showing you guys on those videos. That's not, you know what I mean? That's not no green screen that she's using to walk through the house. That's an actual house that she's got. And I know, once again, I know people, I know it sounds so crazy. Like y'all say y'all got this for 5K. Ain't no house with no fun. Like, I know because once again, you're working off other information. You're working off other information. You're working off of that go to school, get a job, get some job security. So you got to retrain your mind. And that's what a part of being a part of this group is going to do is help you retrain your mind. I, it had to happen for me. I was the same way. Man, you can't get no 10 houses. Man, you can't. What are you talking about? I had to recondition my mind. Okay. So, Dr. Will, what do you, what do you think about? renting versus like creating the notes when it comes to mobile homes do you have any ideas about that so once again um based off of your financial goals right based upon your financial goals what you specifically want to do i tell everybody anybody that asks me about this or anybody i work with um i say what's your number right what's your number and when i say your number what i'm talking about is your operational cost to run your life What's your operational cost to run your life? How you want to live, how you want to experience life, how many vacations you want to go on, um, uh, the quality of life you want. What's that look like? Does that look like 100K a year? Does that look like 500K a year? Does that look like 50K a month? What does that look like? Once you get that number, all you're now doing is looking for the system that allows you to generate the money that gets you your operational cost. So you're always, you're always going to hear all different types of things and they all work, but they only work if you're committed to it. If you're dabbling, if you're not committed, it's never going to work. And then you're going to be like, I tried that. I tried that. That don't work. And so when it comes to notes and when it comes to rent, first off, what's going to get you to where you want to be, right? What's the fastest path for cash? For, for you to get where you want to be, what route do you need to take? I would I would suggest to everybody, and it only takes, you know, three, three to six months, right? Three to six months to really hone in on one aspect. You know what? I'm about to really study these notes out. And after two years, if you did this every six months, after two years, you would have some formidable knowledge on four areas a mobile home investing are four areas of real estate over a two-year period if you said this next six months I'm about to dive into figuring out notes this next six months yeah. this, this next six months I'm gonna dive in to figuring out uh, what's the best greatest uh, on renting right you do this 
right? Without a vision, people perish. If you don't do this, like I just said, where will you be in five years? Will you come back in five years and be like, man, Dr. Will and Kelly was talking about that. I, I heard them on that webinar back then. And here they are, Kelly talking about now she a millionaire. Dr. Will was talking about he didn't buy another hundred houses. You can be a part of it or you can watch it. Right. You right. Can be a, the time is going to pass anyway. Five years, think about it. Where were you five years ago? Exactly. Where were you kids? The time is not stopping. Exactly. The time is not stopping. Exactly. Right? And so you can either get, get on board or look at the board. You know what I mean? Oh, boy, that's a good saying. I might have to steal that from you. <laughs> yeah. So, Dr. Will, I greatly appreciate you being on my show here. But before we go, I actually purchased one of your books just based off the title. You have so many books to pick from. I'm like, uh, I won't pick this one. Can you give us a little snippet of the copycat millionaire, what we can expect? Because I'm still waiting for my book to arrive, and it's actually going to be arriving in Texas, and I'm here in California. So I got oh. four more days before I get it. Oh, are you? But you had to, so here, real quickly, what I did was um, so many people started asking me, Dr. Will, I want to get financially free. I want to get financially free. So what I did, uh, I took 18 months. And I sat down and I said, okay, Will, what did you do to become a millionaire? And then all your mentors and all your friends and all your colleagues, what, what did they do? And so it ended up being about 125 individuals, millionaires, and a couple of billionaires that I sat down with and I interviewed them. And I took all this information and then I said, okay, what were some of the commonalities that they all had? What were some of the commonalities that they all had? It came down to... 21 laws, and I call them 21 laws to building wealth. These were 21 traits, 21 habits that these uh, millionaires and billionaires do. And then I broke it down into five categories. The categories are an acronym, M-O-N-E-Y. When you buy the book, you'll find out what the acronym stands for. But if you take those 21 laws, put them in these five uh, categories, you'll be well on your way to becoming a millionaire. Now, Dr. Will, how can you say that? Why? Because number one, becoming a millionaire doesn't start in your bank account. It starts in your mind. True. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Not as a man has, but as a man thinketh, so is he. So anything that you're going to obtain, it first starts in your mind. You have to say, I'm going to college first before you got the degree. I'm going to apply for the job. You have to have a thought about it first before you take action. So the same way is about becoming a millionaire. We complicate it, and this is why I told you it's um, we're gonna copycat our way. Why do I say copycat? When we were in school, Kelly, everybody got in trouble for what? Copying. <laughs> but in the real world, that's how you succeed. There's nothing new under the sun. Look at McDonald's, look at Burger King, look at Taco Bell. When McDonald's comes out with a four by four for four, guess what Burger King is going to do? Exactly. Guess what Taco Bell is going to do? Exactly. They, they, they don't complicate it. And that chicken sandwich, everybody doing that now. Everybody, everybody on the chicken sandwich, right? Everybody yeah. on the chicken sandwich, right? Yeah, so right. when you look at cars, right, you can't tell the, the Acura – uh, from the Honda Accord, you can't tell the Honda Accord from the Lexus, you can't tell the Lexus from the BMW, you can't tell the BMW from the Mercedes, right? Because all they do, industry to industry, oh, the people like that? Okay, copy it. Right. Why do you think we have so many housewives of, oh, that's what the market like? Sure. Copy it. Why do you think we have so many in, uh, NCIS, right? They get it everywhere, right? Because, oh, this is what the market likes? Copy it. And the same way is true about building wealth. Find someone that has what you have and copy them. It's wow. legal in adulting. When you're in school, they tell, don't cheat. Nobody yeah. better be cheating on their neighbor. And in adulting, you better cheat off your neighbor. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the reason why I purchased that, that book. I'm like, boy, this is a powerful title. I mean, but you have, uh, Dr. Will, how many books have you written in total? Because I go to your Facebook page. I'm like counting. I'm like, okay, let me start back over. It's like one, two, I mean, you have like... About, we're about up to about 55 books now. Wow. That's very impressive. 55. Very impressive. 
So if somebody wants to purchase a book, could you give us the website? Yeah, simply just go to www.drwillspeaks.com. Dr. Will Speaks, that's D-R-W-I-L-L-S-P-E-A-K-S dot com, Dr. Will Speaks dot com. All right. And once again, it was a pleasure having you on here, and thank you so much. And there you can have it, guys. This is Kelly from Heels, Deals, and Wheels, Mobile Home Investing Course. Just finished amazing interview with Dr. Will Moreland. Okay? Thank you so much. Thanks, Kelly.